Hi everyone, uh, Happy New Year. It's the 5th of January. I just wanted to do a quick video to show you some of the gear that I'm using. Um, the, my training is going well, despite the constant rain at the moment. Uh, I fly out on the uh, 7th of March. I um, expect to start walking on the 9th of March, so flying to Los Angeles and then I have to get down to the Mexico border. So um, I'll quickly run through some of the stuff that I'll be, I'll be using. Um, I'll be taking trekking poles, I always walk trekking poles um, and, and I also need to use these for my the tent that I've got so the tent I've got hasn't got any poles so you have to uh, uh, use these to, to keep it up um, so I'll be taking those I'll be walking in, um, these are trail runners um, I'll probably get through I reckon about five or six pairs of these in the walk um, which is a bit of a pay really because they're pretty expensive um, but nonetheless no one really nowadays walks in um, in big leather walking boots or hiking boots everyone just really uses trail run as much of the time so, so that's what I'll be using as well I've been this particular brand I've been using for, I don't know for a couple of years now and they seem to fit my feet well um, I expect to go up in size. Most people go up either one or two shoe sizes during the course of the walk as your as your as your feet spread out. Obviously, a uh, hat, um, a sun hoodie, and, and the clothes that I'll be wearing on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, in the pack, uh, I, I do actually have a little um, a compass there and a, an emergency whistle. All in the navigation, I'll be using my iPhone, which I'm filming this on as well. Um, so just in case you get lost and your iPhone isn't working, then it's always good just to know that you're, which direction you're walking in mostly to make sure you're not walking around in circles. So that will just be on there. And my iPhone and my tripod, which I guess I'm filming on, will be in here. Most of the time I'll be taking um, probably between two and three litres of water. Um, uh, you normally carry about that much most days um, that's how much you drink or you use um, there are some stretches where I think the longest stretch is about 40 miles with, between water sources so but most of your water you have to get out of cattle troughs or puddles or rivers or streams or ponds or that sort of stuff so um, yeah so I'll be carrying quite a bit of water that's that's um, one of the most heavy components, of course, of what you carry. The, um, the whole pack uh, weighs six and a half kilos, 14 odd pounds. That's without any water and without any food. So it's pretty lightweight, but um, yeah, but, but hopefully there's enough stuff in there to keep me comfortable. Um, on this side of the pack, I've got like a, this is a, uh, a pad for really sitting down during the day or lying down during the day in the desert maybe um, the first section you know you try to get out of the sun and, and it's nice just to lay down and um, and it's comfortable and it adds a bit of uh, insulation underneath your sleeping pad which I'll show you in a minute. Um, spoon of course it's the only uh, that's the only piece of uh, cutlery that I'll take I suppose. In here also I've got my uh, water filter, so um, every piece of water that you use, you drink, you have to filter, so you fill up in there with dirty water, it's a micro filter. Put that on and then you obviously just squeeze it out into one of those water bottles I've got down there. So that is a bit of a pain in fairness, um, apparently, uh, yeah, just having to filter every drop of water that you, you're going to use. On the back here, um, I've got some, uh, what are they called, like, like flip flops of some sort, I suppose would really be cool. Um, so they're really about um, river crossings. So in the, in the, so a little bit in the desert, in the high parts of the desert, but certainly in the Sierras, when the snow starts to melt, sort of in the late spring, summer, and um, there's lots of, uh, places where you have to cross water, there's no bridges, you just have to wade through streams and, and those sort of things. So um, 
So you can either do it with your shoes on, which sometimes people do, or you can sort of take something like this. It's also good for around the camp at night, because if you've been walking in shoes all day long, um, it's nice just to let your, uh, your, the air get to, your, get to your feet a bit in the evening. What else have we got here? Gloves, of course. Um, again, for the first sort of half of the trek, really. I get most people, you can get down gloves, but most people use synthetic. Now, the trouble you have with down anything is that uh, if it gets wet, then it just doesn't work at all. So, whereas the synthetic materials, they do work pretty nicely. Um, rain jacket. Uh, some, these are some micro spikes. So, um, you, again, you know, the, in the desert, in the high parts of the desert, and also in um, the uh, Sierras, you know, where there's got a lot of snow. Um, you don't actually need full on crampons, but you definitely need something to give you a bit of grip. So these go, you know, um, mostly the color corner, don't they? These go on, um, these go on, on your shoes, and they just like a, a rubberized thing here, which sort of grips on the outside of your shoes. And they just give you that extra bit of grip that you need. Um, it's, a, it's a serious risk um, uh, sliding down. There's quite a lot of quite steep parts of snow that you have to go across. Um, and, and, you know, when you're up in the tens and 12,000 feet, um, you know, you have to go over the top of some passes and, and for sure you need something like that to try and stop you um, from falling. Yeah, also I have to get, when I get out there uh, for certain sections, I have to get an ice axe because that's all about if you do happen to fall then you can somehow arrest your arrest your fall i suppose i could really practice that or something but um anyway i'll get an ice axe when i get out there what else have i got here oh just my electronic stuff there's a big battery pack in here you'd hope to get into a town or a campsite or something once uh, once a week, so you can charge up the battery pack, and from your battery pack, you can charge up your phone. Um, a heavy piece of equipment, this, but but um, you obviously don't want your phone dying. Um, whilst you don't have signal out there, obviously you can still use the GPS um, to, to navigate by. So um, for sure, you need that. My cooking gear. Um, this is all I'll be cooking with. Um, it's basically just a, a, a you know, a, a, a gas burner, um, and then you sort of put the put the water in there. You boil it up, and mostly dehydrated meals you'll you'll eat. Um, but yeah, uh, I think the food is probably going to be one of the more challenging things about the trek because generally, I think you get you, you just can't carry good food because it's too heavy and you can't get hold of it most of the time so you end up just eating a load of junk. You need about uh, 5,000 calories a day, five to 6,000 calories a day just to maintain your weight because um, you're doing you know so much exercise um, and that's pretty difficult to get that many calories, carry that many calories you know if you're if you're resupplying once every five or six days that's a lot of food you have to carry. Probably um, and a bad carry, uh, you double the weight of your pack, you know, you may carry six, seven kilos of, of food. That's a, a, um, a food sack. So the food sack really is, um, obviously to carry food, and but you can also hang it up in trees if there are any trees, or you quite often, particularly where there's, in, in some areas, you, you, it's a legal requirement to carry a bear canister, so all your food has to go in there. But but quite often, um, one of the problems which I think people suffer is that you know rodents, chipmunks, and all those sort of things come and nibble through and try and get your food all the time. So it's quite often a good idea if there's somewhere to hang hang that in a tree, then you'd, you'd be doing that. Um, this is my tent. So my tent is uh, quite a specialised tent. It's made of uh, a material called Dyneema called Cuban fibre, um, same material, but it's really lightweight. Uh, it doesn't get wet at all in terms of, um, uh, it, it doesn't uh, 
hold any water, you can just shake it off and it's, it's sort of dry. It doesn't soak up any water. So, it's, so you don't, uh, quite a lot of, well, nearly every other sort of material soaks up a certain amount of water, which just makes it more white to carry. It's only single walls, so that's to say it's only a very thin material, virtually transparent in truth. Um, but yes, it's, it's a nice tent. Um, pretty expensive piece of equipment, that probably. I won't tell you exactly how much, because maybe Susie's going to watch this, but uh, it's expensive. Um, here's, a, here's a bag which really um, I'll be using uh, in towns. Um, it's got my passport in, it'll carry my money, my money in it. The Americans, of course, call it a bum bag. No, they call it a fanny bag, don't they? We call it a bum bag. But um, yeah, I'll just call it a bag. So, uh, tooth there, there's my wash kit. So, really, my wash kit is toothbrush, um, some toothpaste in little tablets, and some floss. A little flossy thing, and a, and a nail file. The, the truth is, is that there isn't really anywhere to, to wash. You don't take soap or deodorant or any of that stuff. Um, so, yeah, that's the size of my wash kit. There's my, my first aid kit, um, some plasters, some sort of newer firm, a couple of water purification tablets, um, some tape in case I get blisters. So yeah, that's, that's my first aid kit. Oh yeah, that's my toilet kit. So obviously you have to go to the toilet you know, in the woods or wherever you can find behind a rock. So you have to basically uh, dig a hole. Um, and then once you've dug a hole and you've done your business, then you don't really want to be um, leaving a lot of paper around the place. So so I've got a, a, a bidet. So basically you push that onto the end and then you squirt water. Uh, it's going to be cold and uncomfortable just to clean yourself up. Let's move on from that, shall we? But anyway, that's one of the things you have to do when you get out there. A bug net um, just covers your head, really. So, yeah, there, there are times, of course, where, where there will be midges of one sort or another. So I'm getting down towards the, the end. There's there's my clothes bag. So for the whole of the trip, other than those clothes which I'll be wearing, I will just be taking a pair of shorts, um, uh, you know, and, and two pairs of boxers, two pairs of socks, um, and that'll be it. again. Socks you'd expect to get through, I don't know, 15, 20 pairs of socks um, in the hike. Um, so we'll see how that goes, but yeah, not many other clothes other than what I'll be wearing most of the time. And then my quilt. So this is a, people again don't nowadays really use um, sleeping bags. Sleeping bags uh, are a little bit restrictive. If you ever slept in a sleeping bag, you'll know that, that you know, it's a bit of a cocoon type situation. So, so most people use what I've got here, which is a quilt. This happens to be down actually. Um, it does compress the best um, and it fluffs up the best for, for a quilt. You don't want to get it wet and that's why it's in sort of this bag and then it's in another waterproof bag within the pack and then the pack's waterproof. So, you know, the last thing you really want is your sleeping equipment getting, or your sleeping stuff getting wet. Um, I don't, you don't have a change of clothes for sleeping in, you just sleep in whatever you've been hiking in for the last few days. So yeah, you're probably getting the impression now it's not the um, most sanitized of tracks. And finally in here, um, there's a sleeping pad. So it's, a, it's an air pad, um, you blow it up, it's got an insert, you know, it's got quite good insulation in it. But of course, the most important thing is it's, got, you know, it's comfortable, more comfortable than sleeping on the ground, of course. So, and it insulates you from the ground. So that's basically everything. You will see all of this stuff in a bit more detail, I think, um, uh, during the course of the trek. As I said, I'll be flying out on the 7th of March. I may do another one just before, another video just before I go, just to 
just sort of on my way or something. Um, but then after after that, I'll be trying to put a video together once every week or ten days, um, just to let you know how I'm getting on. So anyway, I hope you're having a good New Year, and I'll catch up with you soon. Cheers.